Kazakhstan has chosen the multi-vector integration. Its trends, collisions, and prospects are coming up in the single market program. Today in our release, Business Council of the Eurasian Economic Union and the Eurasian Commission. Sweet market opportunities. China and Kazakhstan from the perspective of tourism. Where they find a true honey. New Year is ruling the planet's mood for several days. It is a special holiday in terms of the festive atmosphere, expecting the miracles and desire for shaping the future. Hello, I am Pavel Koktyshev and you are watching the Single Market Program. Today we are full of our festive New Year mood. Entrepreneurship is the most mobile segment of the economy in terms of integration. That is exactly the entrepreneurship to be able to generate the project, show the interest for opening production facilities in terms of cooperation, offer the constructive ideas for erasing the trade barriers and be ready for intruding new technologies. Business Council of the Eurasian Economic Union was established in 2015 to use the potential of the business communities of the Eurasian five countries. Our Moscow correspondent, Laura Zhusubekova, was inquiring how the structure is interacting with the Eurasian Economic Commission today and their plans for the future. The history of the Business Council of the Eurasian Economic Union is very interesting. It was initiated by Kazakhstan, especially by the National Chamber of Entrepreneurs, Atomikian. This project was presented in May 2015, five and a half years after the start of the Eurasian Economic Union. This event happened in the Kazakh capital city during the Astana Economic Forum under the section Opportunities for Business of the Eurasian Integration. At that time, it was decided that the national structures which unite the businessmen of various countries and protect their interests will set the style in this new structure. Multilateral dialogue will be the work style, including the Eurasian Economic Commission. It is very interesting and amazing that the opinions expressed two years ago are relevant and challenging still. We must learn how to prioritize. Our mistake is that we are trying to discuss all at once. We can see the specialization. We can see the current priorities of the Kazakhstani business communities. We can see the priorities of the Russian and Belarusian business communities. We all have general topics. This is the business climate, the conditions for bringing these entrepreneurial projects. But without the infrastructure, it is impossible to start all these projects. Today, the importance of this message is outlined by the experts, those examining the problems and prospects of the Eurasian integration. In their opinion, currently, the mutual trade flows are obstructed by the barriers which elimination can be sought through the prism of the infrastructure projects, as that is the infrastructure to create the centripetal forces effect. I am firmly convinced that the transport and logistics establishment project can be such a project in the Eurasian Economic Union. Here you unite almost any topics. You can find a field both for operation of the largest enterprises of our countries and for small and medium-sized businesses. Transition to a digital operation format is a second direction which would simultaneously unite interests of the business communities in the Eurasian Economic Union and would be the optimum solution for eliminating and erasing the barriers obstructing the mutual trade. Otherwise, tomorrow we can have new obstacles. You know it is impossible to imagine a modern integration association without a common digital transformation. The digital economy will make the activities of the governments and all the profile structures, those monitoring the business, trade activities and regulatory authorities more transparent, mobile and active. All the things which form the basis of the Eurasian Union and set forth in the agreement and are implemented, I mean the customs policy, a unified technical settlement policy, etc. I would not list them all. Owing to the digital transformation, all this staff must get the other efficiency. Yes, we understand what directions we should use to seek a solution to the problem that is called the non-integration effect by many experts of the Eurasian Economic Union. We also understand who should become an active ally in introducing new approaches. It is the Business Council of the Eurasian Economic Union. It is just left to determine the nature of communication as required for a constructive dialogue. Communication between the Eurasian Economic Commission as a supranational regulatory authority on one hand and the Business Council on the other hand, which is the speaker of the national business communities. 
It is because if today we do not have a concerted policy, there can be new obstacles tomorrow. So from this perspective, we should gradually shift the focus into this sphere. In other words, to avoid the non-integration effect, appearing and obstructing the free movement of goods, services, capital and labor in the Eurasian Economic Union, we need to place the problems based on three components, such as the constructive dialogue, specific cooperation offers, and implementation of the projects which can unite the interests. The Business Council has supported this format of work proposed by the Eurasian Economic Commission and agreed to become an active member in their initiatives, which, in their opinion, will promote development of the integration processes. Laura Jusubekova, Tigran Galstian, Moscow, especially for the single market program. The confectionery market is considered to be one of the most attractive and winning market both in terms of the consumer's interest and growth opportunities. In this case, various arguments can be used, fast marketing working, the use of various unique formulas, rapid adaptation to the market conditions. Alexander Galiev to follow with the details on how the confectioners in the Eurasian Economic Union countries use all these factors and who is who at this field-specific market. Well, the situation of the confectionery market in the Eurasian Economic Union. For some obvious reasons, Russia is setting the fashion or a taste more precisely. In 2017, Russia managed to restore the industry that was seeding ground in the last two years due to the general crisis in the national economy. Large confectionery manufacturers managed to adapt to the rising prices for the basic raw materials. As for the small enterprises, they resisted the crisis due to the adjustments made. Confectioners changed the formulations and focused on the manufacturing of long-life products, rolls, cakes, pastilles and marshmallows. So almost complete import substitution has occurred. Today, 90% of the Russian market is the locally produced products. Import covers only 10% of the total amount of products. In this case, the imported products are mainly presented by the premium segment products. As for the exports, a positive dynamic is observed in terms of the exports. Mainly the Russian sweets are purchased by Kazakhstan, 21%, China, about 15%, and Belarus, more than 11%. Belarus. Belarus. The Republic is considered to be self-sufficient in terms of sugar supply. As it is known, sugar is one of the main components in the confectionery production. Belarus has four sugar mills which supply their products to confectionaries at affordable prices. And this is a very favorable effect on the cost price of sweets. Therefore, Belarus is successful in exporting. 73% of the products are bought by Russia. 8.5% is exported to Ukraine and 3.6% to the U.S. market. Generally, the geography of the export deliveries covers 24 countries. Kazakhstan. Kazakhstan. Structure of the confectionery market in the Republic of Kazakhstan looks enough ambiguous. On the one hand, a high share of imports is observed here, which makes 44 percent of the total amount. Decline in the purchasing power has shifted the consumption emphasis towards the cheaper confectionaries such as marshmallows, cookies, waffles, pastilles imported to the Kazakh market from other countries. At the same time, Kazakhstan is quite successful in exporting their products, as Kazakh products are of high quality, as the local manufacturers are trying to uphold and maintain their reputation and local brands by using the natural raw materials, strictly maintaining the recipes and offering a good range of products. 72% of the Kazakhstani confectionaries are exported to Russia, 10% is the share of Kyrgyzstan, 4% are shipped to Uzbekistan and Tajikistan, and about 3% is supplied to the Chinese market. The remaining part of the products is exported to Germany, the United Arab Emirates, Azerbaijan and Mongolia. We have a potential for the industry growth. Kazakh confectionery enterprises are loaded by only 60 percent. But at the same time, it is relevant to note that several factors are affecting the industry development, such as dependence on the world prices for cocoa beans, sugar and other ingredients, as well as deficiency of the domestic market protection measures. Kazakhstani sweets manufacturers are always working in the competitive environment. As a conclusion, let's cheer up our review. New Year is the longest holiday. It is always associated with the New Year sweets. It will be that very moment when we are trying to choose the best taste, so we would have a good reason to support the domestic manufacturers. I am Alexander Galiev. That's all I have for the moment.
Мудрому Конфуцу принадлежит множество афоризмов. Wise Confucius had authored many aphorisms which are still valid and important. One of them is never relevant as today. If your paths are different, you cannot make plans together. Kazakhstan and China have common plans so their paths cross, including in the field of tourism. For example, 2017 in Kazakhstan was the year of Chinese tourism. China holds the world record for outbound tourism. Citizens of the Celestial Empire for some years now crowd the top of the list of the World Tourism Organization as the most active tourists traveling abroad. In 2017, Chinese tourists spent a total amount of more than 270 billion U.S. dollars. On the other hand, from the tourism viewpoint, China itself is one of the most visited countries. They have the Great Wall of China, whose age is very respectable according to the historical standards, more than 2,300 years old. Construction of the Great Wall was started on the order of the first Chinese emperor, Queen Shi Huang. This decision was made due to the frequent invasions of the nomads to the Chinese lands, especially invasions of the Mongols. Finally, they've got such a vast and enormous structure, which is considered to be one of the seven wonders of the world. Another tourist place of interest is connected with the name of Queen Shi Huang, Emperor. It is a famous terracotta army that consists of more than 8,000 soldiers made of clay. Soldiers' production process consisted of several stages. A body was made in the very beginning, and their hands and heads were assembled and attached. Then a statue was fired for several days in a furnace at a temperature of 1,000 degrees, where the clay turned into terracotta, a material that is as strong as stone. By the way, part of the Terracotta Army collection was exhibited under the cultural program at the Expo 2017 in the Kazakh capital city in Astana. Figures of soldiers dressed up fit to glitter in uniform, weapons and ornaments were exhibited in the National Museum of Kazakhstan. The collection delivered from Xi'an City, the Chinese province of Shanxi, attracted the attention of tourists from Kazakhstan and neighboring Russia. In return, all kinds of exhibitions and concerts arranged by Kazakhstan in the days of the expo became the center for attracting the Chinese guests. For example, more than 3,000 Chinese fans arrived at the concert of Dimash Kudaibergen, who is considered to be the ambassador of Kazakh culture in the celestial empire today. Besides the cultural events, the presentations organized by the Chinese National Pavilion became a good platform for strengthening the human relations between our countries. The Celestial Empire exhibited their last scientific achievements in their pavilion. The Chinese pavilion made the top five in terms of popular pavilions. On average, the exhibition was visited by 30,000 people on a daily basis, and surely every sixth visitor visited our pavilion. An increasing flow of the educational tourism is another trend noted by the experts in 2017. We observe an increasing number of young people from both countries, those seeking to get wants and needs met, study and cultural tourism. Young people from China travel to Kazakhstan. I came from Xichang, from the Urumqi city. Now I study the specialty of the international law. I decided to obtain a higher education in Kazakhstan for two reasons. First, it is considered as one of the best in Central Asia. The second reason, my parents live and work here in Almaty. In return, Kazakhstani citizens increasingly go to China to get a higher education, to learn the Chinese language, and soak up local culture that always ranks with the oldest nations in the world. I live in Xi'an City for more than six years. I've studied and graduated with my bachelor's degree in international relations. Today, I'm a first-year student in the master's degree program of the international relations and commercial business. According to the forecast of the tourism market experts in the winter season, vacations at Hainan Island in China will be attractive for Kazakhstanis, and the New Year holidays will be the most active period. As for the Chinese tourists, they will show their interest in recreation at the Kazakh ski resorts. In any case, both parties are ready for continuing the cooperation in the fields of activities which help peoples to get to know each other better.
In addition to the industrial favorites, each of the five member countries of the Eurasian Economic Union has their certain types of products that can act as the national brands. For example, this is honey in Armenia, which is among the exported goods. Today, honey is successfully sold both in the Eurasian Economic Union and beyond the integration territory. So we turn the floor over to Elina Kazaryan, our correspondent from Armenia. Since ages ago, from pole to pole, honey is regarded as the most useful natural product. According to the experts, as for the Armenian honey, it is better than the Chinese and Argentinian honey. But these countries are known as the global leaders in honey production. The point is that the Armenian honey has very little water, more vitamins and health-giving powers. Therefore, the Armenian honey was awarded diplomas, prizes and certificates, merit many times at all kinds of exhibitions. According to the specialists, there are more than 600 honey plants growing in Armenia. Most of them are medicinal herbs. This not only increases the honey quality, but also makes it taste special. Besides, their apiaries are based at over 2,000 meters elevation, away from the hazardous industries and highways, in a place full of glades, meadows and motley grasses. It is not only honey, but all the Armenian food products become a brand due to the number of sunny days in the year, air temperature, humidity, earth composition and water. In Armenia, they sip the honey once a year from the late July to early August. However, the beekeepers have enough work to do for the whole year since many beekeepers keep the roving nomadic lifestyle when their bees are moving from one place to another. Seasonally, I can get up to 400 kilograms of honey from my 25 hive brood chambers if the year is favorable. I would not say that this year is favorable, it is an ordinary as last year. 200 to 300 kilograms of honey is a small income, but the honey must be clean, let me say again, clean. It is for the buyer to be looking for you next year. In general, there are about 200,000 hive brood chambers in Armenia, which totally produce about 1,000 tons of honey a year. And you know, they have a great variety of honey. In any case, the consumer has a wide range of choice, white honey, mother of thyme honey, buckwheat honey, thyme honey, and chestnut honey. The whole variety of the Armenian honey can be found at the annual festival of honey and berries, which has been held six times in the bird city, Tavush region. Murad Grigoryan, one of the participants of this festival. Since being a kid, Murad was taught by his grandfather to help bees do the true honey. A feeling of liability for the true honey and for the products was passed to him as well. Murad is tracing out his name and telephone number painstakingly at every single jar of honey. The Armenian beekeeping has great potential. However, they have some problems with the product sales. And the main goal of the festive promoters is to overcome the challenges and help the beekeepers in marketing their products. Year by year, this festival becomes more popular, not only as a specialized fair, but also as a tourist destination. Therefore, today, Armenia lays special emphasis on the beekeeping development. Rosa Sarukyan, chairman of the National Beekeepers Association. At the same time, Rosa Sarukyan has her own apiary with about 1,000 honeybee colonies. She has raised bees for 50 years. She knows all the beekeepers' problems from inside out. I have personally visited all the Armenian regions where they do beekeeping. We have established a committee and appointed the chairman in each of the 10 regions. Everything was discussed right there on site. The beekeeping development program was prepared. All our problems and their solutions were set forth in the beekeeping development program. I will submit this program to the Minister of Agriculture. <laughs> In the opinion to the Honey Festival promoters, one of the best options to ensure the industry support is to create specialized beekeeping park where our wants and needs can be met. We believe that all beekeepers can be congregated in the same area. On the one hand, they will make it easier to deal with the sales. On the other hand, it will stimulate the interest of youth. Popular Yemeni honey costs about 300 US dollars per one kilo. With the assumption that the Armenian honey surpasses the Yemeni honey in fineness and quality. It follows thence that these products could occupy their rightful place in the international market. They just need to create the appropriate infrastructure.
мнению специалистов, проблемы со сбытом сладкой. According to the experts, the sweet sales problem can be largely resolved after opening of the small honey bottling and packaging plant in Yerevan with their own specialized quality laboratory. Implementation of this project will make it possible to centrally deliver honey from throughout Armenian private apiaries. Moreover, a certificate will be enclosed to the products. The National Beekeepers Association is already trying to enlist the governmental support to this project. Elena Kazaryan, Tigran Galstyan and Gurgen Vadarinyan, especially for the single market program from Armenia. That's all for today. I'm Pavel Koktyshev. Let me remind you that you can find all our stories at www.kazakh-tv.kz. See you in the next single market.